All right, everybody. Um, so we are uploading all the classes now. I'm starting with the chapter that we did uh, just recently, and uh, we'll get the other chapters on there as well. And um, so anyway, I just thought this would be a good way that you guys could relook at things. So with lifting and moving um, topics, like we said, or protecting yourself, body mechanics, protecting your patient, emergency, urgent, and non-urgent moves is the stuff that we're going to cover today. Um, so anyway. Uh, protect yourself by body mechanics, uh, the proper use of your body to prevent injury and facilitating and moving. So basically on every call, as we discussed in class, you want to protect yourself um, because if you're if you're down um, and out, then now you need an area bus to come help you as well. Or you're putting yourself at risk and, and liable if you hurt yourself while carrying a patient or other things to consider. So um, the object always consider the weight of that object and whether it would require additional help to lift. You know, just kind of assess the situation and say, man, I know my limitations. I know that person's in an awkward spot or, you know, maybe a bariatric patient that you know you can't handle by yourself or with your partner. So get help there if you need to. Um, you know, so that's just one thing to look at. Um, and then the other side is communication. We're going to lift three, two, one. Uh, make your plan and communicate with your partner. So don't just go lift out of adrenaline or um, just to get it done. Take time and look at it and say, okay, let's do this and, and then make a plan and communicate it. Um, position your feet properly. Shoulder length apart is the best way to have your feet. Um, you know, so that way the, the biggest muscles you have are in your legs. So you lift with your legs, you know, and your thighs. And having that with your shoulders, it gives your whole body the leverage it needs to use those muscles. And keeping your back straight with your hip and not twisting or churning, all your muscles kind of work together to get that job done. When you start twisting and moving, you're kind of um, using your leg muscles, but you're also not utilizing your torso and all the back muscles to line up with your legs and put everything in a perfect spot to work together. Um, and then don't ever lift with one hand. Do not ever lift with one hand. Um, don't carry your bag and a backboard and both and have in different hands. Carry with both hands and, and keep it close to your body. Um, keep weight as close as possible. So, like I said, keep it close to your body. When you're carrying a backboard, care you know best place is kind of carrying it close to your hips. Um, but closer to your body is better. Further away you get, your lever you're changing the leverage that you have to be just arm strength versus when it's close to your body, you got your back strength and, and, and your arm strength. And use a stair chair when carrying patients on stairs whenever possible. The stair chair is, you know, it's kind of like a dolly. It has tracks, you pop it out, and it'll glide down the stairs. Um, I've used it many times, and I think it's a great tool. It's not always perfect, but it is a great, great tool. And there's a picture of the stair chair, one guy in the front, one guy in the back, and one guy to support, and uh, work good as a team. <clears throat> the grip cots, the power grip, um, right there, like you see, he's holding it close to his body, his back is straight, his leg muscles are being used, his feet are shoulder length apart, perfect way to handle that situation. Um, when reaching, keep back in a locked position, like you saw in that picture. <coughs> Excuse me. Avoid twisting while reaching. Avoid reaching more than 20 inches in front of your body and avoid prolonged reaching when strenuous effort is required. So just common sense stuff that you do with your body. Um, but remember all these things for test questions because it's going to be in the exam um, to some degree. So even though it's common sense, you have to know what they're looking for in exams. Um, when pushing and or pulling, is better to push. Um, so if you got to move a patient, um, you're going to pull. There's no way not to. But... Whenever you can, push versus pulling. It's just easier on your body. Keep your back locked. Keep line of pull through center of body and keep weight close to the body. Um, it's kind of repetitive, but remember that. Um, so when pushing or pulling, if the weight is below your waist, um, I like to go down on, on the ground, um, kneel down um, in a position that helps you. You know, instead of bending, just think about it. Anytime you bend and lift, you're using your back. You put your spine and yourself at risk for injury. So anytime you need to go below your waist, just kneel down, 
keep your legs shoulder length apart and, and do the same mechanism as you would if you're standing and, and that just helps keep those legs at use and your back safe. Um, and then avoid pushing or pulling overhead. You know, um, everything you want to do with your muscle mechanics is body in the length of your body. Whether you have to kneel down, whether you're standing, you're not really going over your head and you're not bending below your waist. Um, so protecting patients in urgent moves and not urgent moves. You're going to have quite a time when with um, Highway 287 and, and even 40 to some degree, but mostly on 287 you got a lot of accidents and and you got the urgent moves that you're going to have to do sometimes. So if the scene is hazardous, you got to get that patient moved so you can take care of their life-threatening conditions. Um, so when you get to the patient, if they're in a dangerous spot, you look at them, man, they got a um, abdominal bleed or a puncture in the lower thoracic or in the lower abdomen or something. Um, and you got to control that bleeding, but you first got to move them out of the hazardous environment to be able to do that. So you must take care of that situation. Um, a lot of people will use the clothes drag, so if they're in the house and the house is on fire or um, carbon monoxide poisoning, anything to that degree, um, clothes drag is a good way to go. Um, incline drag, you know, remember as we talked in class too. Always head first, you know, we want to take them down with their head so their feet are bouncing off the steps, but their butt or their head or their back are, is safe um, as you do that down the stairs. Fireman drag, or firefighter drag, tying your wrist over your head and use your body to drag them as you're crawling. Um, it's a really good way, I mean, I've never done it, but uh, <laughs> I can understand the way that would be a good, good way to go. Um, blanket drag, wrapping them up like a burrito and then just pulling them. One rescue assist, two rescue assists, and we're going to practice all these as we get closer to practicals at the end of class. Um, but situations for urgent moves is the required treatment can be performed only if the patient has moved. There's times when they're in the car, you can do what you can in the car, but there's also times you can't take care of the rest of those injuries until they're moved. So um, an urgent move is either life's in danger, treatment can't be administered if they're in that position, or you know, or the scene is going to cause more harm to them. So urgent moves is any of those things that are in play, move the patient. Moving a patient under a long spine board. You know, this is an area where we lose a lot of backboards. And as we talked in class, for, for registry, constantly remember backboard, backboard, backboard. Um, but backboarding is a way we're getting away from. But use of immediate threat to life and suspicious spine injury. So if they're an immediate threat or their spine is... There's a, definitely a mechanism of injury that may cause, looks like a spinal injury, or could cause a spinal injury, you backboard them. Um, better safe than sorry. Um, so basically you lay the patient supine, and then you log roll them. So their hips and their back and their head all move together. Um, you're not moving their hips first and then straighten their body. Move everything together um, onto, and log roll them onto the board. So... Um, basically, yeah, so when they're supine, log roll them to their side, place the back or the board behind their back, and then roll them back as a log roll onto the back, or on the backboard. So basically, log rolling simply means the body moves like a log all together. Your head is, someone's at C-spine, someone's at the hips, and someone's at the feet. One, two, three, roll up, everything moves together, place the board. One, two, three, everybody's back down, moving together. Uh, moving a patient onto a long spine board, um, lift on the stretcher, secure the stretcher, load in the ambulance. Uh, so basically when you get them on the board, carry them to the stretcher, secure them, and it's important that you secure them with every seat belt you have. Um, don't be lazy with it and try to just hurry it on. Leg, hips, um, abdomen, shoulders, all secured onto that stretcher, and then load in the ambulance. When you're in route, if you got to move a seat belt, you can move it and then do, the, do your... Um, work and then place it back on them. Rapid extrication, um, when taking time to mobilize the patient in, onto a short backboard or vest is too dangerous. It's, uh, the patient's in critical condition or the, they're in a dangerous hazardous situation so you got to rapidly get them out of that car to be able to do the work. Um, so stabilize the spine manually as patient has moved onto a long spine board. So you got to get them out. So you're not going to place a half backboard, you're not going to use the vest, um, you just got to get them out of that situation. So you hold their C-spine, rapidly roll them, on, roll them onto a log board, and then take them out of the situation so you can do your rest of your assessment. Non-urgent move is the patient is stable. So now you have time to stay and play a little bit. Um, as, 
what we call it. So you can do some patient care um, and you have time to do it properly. And like I repeat, and you're going to get sick of me saying this over and over again, but you always have time to do proper patient care. If you're doing an urgent move because the situation is dangerous, you're still taking time to hold that C-spine, make sure that board is there, one, two, three, roll them onto that board, always time to do proper patient care. The biggest thing is that people, no matter the outcome of that situation, it's important for the community and the family and people involved to look at us and you and see that you're doing absolutely everything to the best of your ability to take care of that patient. Take all required precautions not to aggravate existing conditions. So you can do your immediate life threats, you can do your you can assess the patient, treat the patient and move him normally, and take all required precautions not to aggravate existing conditions. So sometimes when you move the patient, you're causing more problems. When you have time, you do the proper thing so you don't cause more damage as you take care of them. Um, patient carrying devices that we have, a lot of stuff. We have wheelchair, uh, wheeled stretchers, power stretchers, manual stretchers, bariatric stretchers. Um, a lot of them will hold a lot. We, I think ours is four to 500 pounds, but a lot of them will go up to 800 pounds, so remember that number. Um, and there's an example of a normal stretcher. Uh, as I told you guys before, that striker right there is in both of our secondary ambulances. Um, they are not self-loading, but they are self-lifting. So you hook them on the ambulance, hit the button, and the wheels will go up, and then you help with your partner push them the rest of the way in, and then the stretcher locks in the ambulance. Um, the Ferno Cot is the other powerful one that people use. A um, little bit more complicated, like I said. There's a lot to it, um, but it's a you know it's a pretty popular one. A lot of cities are using them now. Uh, I'm not a big fan. Bariatric, you can see will hold a lot more weight. Uh, it's got the tracks there, so it locks in, and then you push or pull him into the ambulance, and it looks like that guy there has a button that he's pushing to help assist that as well. And then you can also see it's in a larger ambulance um, to help you have time to do patient, or room to do patient care with them as well. Stair chairs, useful where stretchers cannot be easily maneuvered. Um, spine board, short, primarily for removing patients from vehicles when neck or spine injury is suspected. Short boards are really good um, in sticky situations. It just basically goes from the head to the hips. Uh, just what it says, it's short back board and help get them out. And the long board covers the whole length of the body. So picture the stair chair. Please play with these as much as you can so you're not on scene trying to figure them out. Um, there's a half back board there, as you see. You can slide underneath the between the seat, car seat and the patient, and then long boards. Uh, can't get those in the car, but that's where you log roll them onto them or hold their C-spine and one, two, three, roll them from the car onto one of those. You place the narrow part under their butt and, and log roll them on and slide them up. Portable stretchers, scoop stretchers, basket stretchers, flexible stretchers, vacuum mattresses. All powerful things that we use for, for trauma victims. Um, there's a vest type extrication device. Uh, we've never used one, like I've said, but I've seen them. We do have some in our in our facilities, um, but basically those are kind of out the window anymore. Um, the scoop, uh, we we use that on uh, I'd say 98% of the calls that we are on with CarX, we use the scoop. Um, patient carrying device, we don't really use those as much. Firehouse has a couple, I think, but those are primarily used, you know for wilderness issues or trying to lower someone down a window. Um, so there's needs for them. We just haven't ever had that need here since I've been on the department. Another um, soft stretcher. The vacuum mattress, um, big fan. I'm getting ready to hopefully next year we'll have two of those for every ambulance. Um, but those are great. Uh, like we practice in class, you can scoop somebody up carry them on, um, take the scoop apart, and they don't have to move that patient at all. And then they're right on that vacuum mattress. Wrap that around them to protect their hips if they need. I mean, if they have a pelvic break or fracture, we have splints for that. But then also wrap that around for comfort and around the neck and spine, and it helps secure them. Take the air out, and it forms around the person's body, and then it'll stay that way until they take the air out. So if we got to fly them out, it's a very comfortable way to go. Um, so good thing to always use.
patients with suspected uh, spine injury, uh, you know, immobilize head, neck, and spine before moving. And it's just common sense there, but basically any time that you feel like there's a spinal injury, um, you don't want to move that spine. <clears throat> if they have a step-off fracture in their neck, you don't want to let that just go. So C-collar, hold that spine, and whenever you move that patient, anytime you move that patient, from the ground to the stretcher, from the stretcher to the hospital bed, whatever you got to do, you move that patient holding the spine in place. Immobilize the head, neck, and spine before moving. Um, perform manual stabilization. And when you're on that C-collar or when you're on that C-spine, you're on that C-spine for the duration. Until that patient is secured to a stretcher and in the ambulance, you're holding that C-spine. Maintain manual stabilization until the patient is mobilized to spine board, like I just said. And then there's a lot of times, this isn't a test, but when we're at the hospital at KMH, there's a lot of times one of us will stay in the emergency room while the other people clean the ambulance and, and finish up the, the housekeeping issues that we have to hold that C-spine and help the ER with those kind of injuries. Because they're going to have to take the C-collar off and get a scan and all that. And it's best that if we can stick around and help them as much as possible. Um, extremity lifts, if, they don't, if you're not expecting a C, uh, spinal injury, uh, you can lift them you know, by their extremities, just like that. And a lot of times we can do that from the ground to the stretcher. Um, that's a good way to go. That's all I got to say about that one. A patient with no suspected spine injury is a direct ground lift. Lift from the ground to the stretcher. I'm not sure what the difference is between that and necessarily the extremity lift, except for how you are lifting them. You know, I see that there, the lady straight, one at the legs, one at the thoracic, and ta-da. Draw sheet method, um, do that a lot in houses where, you know, sick lady, they can't get out of bed, you know, just instead of making them try to get up, just raise your stretcher up to their bed and then pull them from with their own sheet onto your stretcher and then secure them. Recovery position, um, place the patient believed in shock and supine, don't lift the heads or legs. Um, that's gonna be very important to examine registry uh, if, they're, if you think they're in shock, the best thing to do is keep their body neutral so blood can keep trying to perfuse through the body. Um, and so you keep everything neutral. When you arrive at the hospital, we'll have to move them to their stretcher. So th same thing. Take the seat belts off, draw street, or draw street, draw sheet method. One, two, three, boom. Um, and I apologize. I've talked to Memorial. They told me they sent me a bunch of videos that won't work, and uh, I don't think they care. But anyway, so any questions on that, please feel free to text me. Um, you all have my number, and I uh, would gladly, uh, gladly answer any questions, especially when um, you're doing a class where we don't actually have classroom time. We're just doing online, and I don't mind doing a couple of those. We can't do very many because um, Memorial won't count that as attendance. But always text or call me with questions, and I appreciate you guys being dedicated students. I'm very excited to have you on the team, and also I appreciate you taking time to watch these classes. So talk to you soon, and uh, we'll be uploading all the classes.